Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. You all are the blessedness of the Father wherever you are. I honor each and every one of you. To God be the glory. Amen and amen. So today I just want to speak on a topic <laughs> that I have not taught before. So um, I've studied it um, to God be the glory and just from the revelation of what the Lord has given you know, we're here to teach one another. <laughs> so I'm learning at the same time. So please bear with me <laughs> as we, you know, carefully look at this word in itself, because I know that the Lord is bringing correction to the body. Do you see it? I call it correction. Yes. So it's on the word yod hey vav hey. Can I say that again? yod hey vav hey, And it's a place where Many a time, you know, religion has taught us again and again. This is why I always encourage a lot of people that religion is not people. No, religion is a spirit. And this basically, you know, it stems from a teaching. I, I don't, I don't, I'm, we're not here to talk about the roots of the teaching itself. No, not at all. But it's a teaching that has continued to be passed down in the body. And for that reason, we as saints and as sons, we have not taken time out to actually look at the scriptures, but we continue to what? We continue to teach and recycle the same teaching. But the Lord wants to reveal the truth unto each and every one of us. Because this word, yod hey vav -Hey, has always been associated with the four faces of God. That is wrong. <laughs> Do you see it? It is wrong. Why? Because you've attributed the face of God into just four dimensions. But that is wrong. The reason why I said it is wrong is because the Bible tells us that it is it, it pleases the Father that the fullness of him. Now, I want you to look at, you know, the dimension of the Bible. How many angels are in the Bible? Many, right? I'm glad you said so. And each of that angel have a dimension in the Father. Yes, they do. They have a dimension, each of them unique in the Father. So we picked up an angel in the Bible and we basically, <laughs> we made God to be permanent in that angel. And that is not right. You know why? Because we have limited God to the four faces. Many a time in religion, again and again and again, this has always been the case. Let us go to the book of Revelation and chapter 4. So we're going to look at it from the dimension of Revelation and chapter 4. So in this in itself, the Bible tells us, now it says here, after this, I looked and there before me was a door standing open in heaven and a voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. At once, I was in the spirit and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. Can you see that? Can I repeat that? I will show you what must take place after this. At once, I was in the spirit and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it and then goes the description of the person who was sitting in it then in verse 6 it says also in front of the throne there was what looked like a sea of glass clear as crystal in the center of the throne were four living creatures and they were covered with eyes in front and in back and the first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Can you see? Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. This are angels. They are the dimension of angels called living creatures. Can you see that? It's not the face. They are not the faces of God. They are the faces of the angels. <laughs> now, let's go to 
I'm sure you might be looking at it like, wow, you know, <laughs> is this, you know, you, because many, many a time we don't go back to the scriptures to search, but we go by what people have continued to say. And thereby we have remained in what? We have remained stagnant in knowledge, but you're not stagnant in the name of Jesus because you're coming up higher according to this word. Now let's look at Ezekiel chapter one right? This was the vision that Ezekiel had when he was what? With the captives by the river of Chabar. Now look at what he saw according to Ezekiel 1 and 5. And he said, also from within it came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. Can you see? The four living creatures, the four living creatures, the four <laughs> living creatures and he says and this was their appearance they had the likeness of a man each one had four faces and each one had four wings their legs were straight and the soles of their feet were like the soles of calves feet <laughs> is that the feet of god no that's the angels can you see and he says the hands of a man were under their wings, on their four sides, and each of the four had faces and wings. Can you see that dimension? Now, we got to see the dimension of it again in Ezekiel chapter 10. Because when in Ezekiel chapter 1, in, chap in chapter 1 when Ezekiel saw them, he didn't know who they were. But in chapter 10, he understood who they were eventually. Can you see that dimension? The Bible says, <laughs> it says, And I looked, and there in the firmament was uh, that was above the head of the cherubim. Then appeared something like a sapphire stone, having the appearance of the likeness of a throne. Can you see that in itself? Then it went on in verse 14. It says that what? Each one had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub. The second face, the face of a man. The third face, the face of a lion. And the fourth, the face of an eagle. And the cherubim were lifted up. Can you see that dimension? <laughs> Can you see? One said it had a face like that of what? Of an eagle. And now this one had the face of a what? of a cherub. So you can see that this is another dimension of an angel. So why have we continued to basically call an angel the face of God when they have the same, you know, they have different dimensions in the Father? That's not the face of God. Not at all. The Bible says that what? He dwells in the unapproachable light because he himself is light. Now, look at what the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation chapter 5. Let's, let's look at, let's, let's understand who, you know, what, how basically he's been described in Revelation chapter 5. The Bible says, And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll? Can you see? And lose its seals. It seals. The Bible then goes on to say in verse 6, And I looked and behold in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, and it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Can you see that dimension? So now, why do we continue to call the face of an angel the face of God? And we call it the four faces of God, which is absolutely wrong in itself. Can you see that? Because those angels are assigned to you. Each of their faces, they have a function. Can you see? Each of their faces, they have a function. And their dimension is in the Father. Just in the same way, the Bible talks about the angel of the flames of fire. So the angel of the flames of fire, what did he do? He came to prepare the way in the book of Exodus. So the, the bush was burning. Yeah, there was fire on the bush, but the bush was not burning. But then God spoke through the fire. So it was an angel that came to prepare the way. And God spoke through that angel. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. So you can see, he spoke through that angel. So God uses the what? The living creatures. But that is not the face of God. yod Vave is the dimension 
of the living creatures, the four faces of the living creatures. So when you basically begin to hear Yod Hey Vav Hey, and that has come into your dimension, you're better much understanding that the living creatures are with you. <laughs> and they basically have a personality. You know, they have because they are in the Father, they are light, right? And because of the light that they are, you begin to understand it. Because in Ezekiel chapter 1, it gives us the description of their appearance. It said they came through a whirlwind. Can you see that? They came through a whirlwind. As we can see, it says, Then I looked and behold, a whirlwind was coming out of the north, a great cloud with raging fire engulfing itself, and brightness was all around it, and radiating out of its mist like the color of amber, out of the mist of the fire. Also from within it came the four living creatures. Because we see in Revelation chapter 4, they were with the 24 elders they were worshiping so every time they worship the living creatures i mean the 24 elders they cast their crowns and they worship with them so every time these living creatures are with you they come because it's a place of worship it's a place of worship in the dimension of the father it is not the four faces of god God, can you see that in itself because jesus spoke to you know when philip was saying show us the father he said philip have you been with me for this long and you're still asking me to show you the father <laughs> was jesus having the four faces no <laughs> i am the father that's what jesus said so that's the manifestation of the father in flesh jesus christ so how then can we attribute the an angel <laughs> God, I believe, you know, in Hebrews chapter 1, he basically talks about angels and sons. You know, it says, which of the angels has God called a son? None of them. So now you begin to understand it because time and time this has been taught. Time and time this has been taught. And if you read Ezekiel 1 13, it talks about, you know, when they come to help you. Because I believe I've taught about angels on this channel. And you begin to understand that there are different types of angels and they have different assignments the seraphims, the cherubims, the living creatures. Also, you have you have who you have the you have angel michael angel gabriel and then you begin you know they're both you, you know they're they're basically uh, uh in the dimension of the father and when you begin to understand that in itself you understand that there are many more of them there is a the breaker angel there is an the angel of provision there is angel of fire you know and they keep coming there's so many of them so can we say one angel, angel Gabriel is God? <laughs> because if you're saying that the living creatures, they are the faces of God, then you might say angel Gabriel is God. No, he's not. <laughs> they are here to minister to you because it's your inheritance through Christ Jesus. But those faces, they do have functions. Yes, they do. Those faces, they do have functions because when you begin to walk with living creatures, you know, I believe I've shared their dimension here, helping you to understand that majority of them, you know, they come as flashing lights. Yes, flashing lights. You see that in the essence of what? In the essence of Revelation and chapter 4. So, in Revelation chapter 4, because they come in different dimensions, but one of their dimensions is what? Is the flashing light. So, you can see it's the dimension of who they are. And that's why the Lord is helping you to understand those faces of those angels. <laughs> they are not they are not they're not my faces. No, not at all. They are a dimension inside of me. Can you see that dimension? They are inside of me. They are what? Inside of me. So if they are inside of the Father, can you see? How can that be the Father? He uses them. I, whenever he wants to, you know, he basically sends them on messages, on errands, if he needs be. But they are not the faces of God. So I want us to understand what the dimension of the faces are so that we can better, you know, when if, if you're basically in, in walking with them so you can understand what they are here to do and how they manifest all around you. You know, majority of the time I've helped people to understand that when you begin to hear 
Number one, I said, when you begin to see flashes of lightnings, you know, that's who they are. They, you can be, you know, when you see light flash here, light flash there, you know, I believe if you've been to the opticians, they always said, you see flashes of light, you know, and they can tell me that there is something wrong, you know, you, there is something wrong with your eyesight. But no. So if they're, if they're telling you, if you see flashes of light, there's something wrong. No, because if you're in Christ, you understand that those flashes of light are actually them around you. They come as orbs at the same time. And sometimes I believe, you know, if you if you go on YouTube and some ministers that are teaching this in itself, you begin to understand that there are even different colors. There is blue orb, yellow orb, green orb, which I have taught here at the same time too. And that's, the, that's for you to understand that they are with you. And when they are with you, that is when you have that desire. I need to worship God. It's about worshiping the Father. It's about worship. It's about worship. Because it is worship that brings you into the dimension of what? Revelation chapter 4 and the scrolls. Can you see that in itself? The scrolls. <laughs> the what? The scrolls. So this is the dimension where the Lord is helping you to understand that the yod hey vav hey is not the four faces of God. No, not at all. It is not the four faces. It is a dimension of the Father. Can you see that? So now, that's why I told you that they come in flashings and in orbs. Because if you read Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 4 and verses 5, this is where you begin to understand it, that they came from within. So from those flashing lights, they proceed. From the orbs, they proceed. That's why I said the orbs are in different colors. So what are the very manifestation of their faces? The face of an eagle, the face of man, the face of what? The face of an ox, and also the face of a lion. In time, so let us let us look at this one after the other. We're gonna start with we're gonna start with uh, I believe the ox. So I've helped us to understand in the dimension of the strength, you know, according to Isaiah 11, we talked about what? In Isaiah 11, there is the spirit of what? The spirit of might. So most of the time, when the Lord needs to send you in places, when the Lord needs to, you know, I, I need you to go somewhere, but for you to do what you need to do, you need strength. The Bible tells us in the book of Philippians chapter 4 that you can do all things through what? Through Christ who strengthens you. But let us look at what it talks about in, in for the ox. Let's look at what it says concerning ox in the book of Numbers chapter 23. So if you have your Bible, <laughs> we're going to the book of Numbers chapter 23 and from verse 22. This is where we see what was said of an ox. It says here, it says, God brings them out. Let's start from verse 21. I believe this was when the Lord was talking to Balak and, you know, Balak going basically, you know, to speak uh, a curse against the children of Israel. And the Lord had to begin to speak to him. And this is what he said from verse 21. He has not observed iniquity in Jacob, nor has he seen wickedness in Israel. The Lord, his God is with him and the shout of a king is among them. God brings them out of Egypt. He has strength like a wild ox. Can you see? God brings them out of Egypt. He has strength like a wild ox. Does that mean God's strength is like that of a wild ox? He said it is like, not as a wild ox, because God is powerful <laughs> than a wild ox. Can you see that dimension? But the strength in which he used to bring them out of Egypt is like that of a what? A wild ox. So every time the face of the living creature is manifested as the wild ox around you, this is where you begin to understand that the spirit of might is in your presence to accomplish what the Lord intends for you. And that is a dimension in the living creature because the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 1 14, they are ministers, the heirs of salvation. So they are ministering strength to you. Remember that, you know, in the book of Daniel, you know, there's a dimension of, I believe, Angel Gabriel when he came to, when he came to uh, 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 Daniel and he said, he touched me and then strength came to me. So yes, Angels can release strength to you because the Bible tells us, you know, in the book of Mark, I believe chapter one, when Jesus was in the wilderness, what happened? The Bible says after he came out of the wilderness, the angels came and they strengthened him. 
So even though Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 tells us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, the angels sometimes, yes, they come to give strength. And that's where you begin to understand. When you begin to see ox, ox everywhere, ox everywhere, that means the living creature in the dimension of the ox is with you. I believe I've shared many a time helping us to understand that you seated as the sun. Yes, because you can't you can't basically walk this in fullness if you're a Christian, a believer, or you are either a, a child of God or you are you know a servant. You can taste and see, but you can't walk in fullness because all of those identities are slavery. So now you begin to understand it. To walk in the fullness of this, you have to be a son. Yes. A son. You cannot be both. You cannot be hot and, you know, you cannot be lukewarm. So you can't be a Christian and a son, a believer and a son. No, 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 no. That's why the Bible tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only what? Begotten son. Not a begotten Christian, a begotten believer. No, no, a, be a begotten son. So this is where you begin to understand it. That when the living creature, when you begin to see, you know, ox everywhere, ox everywhere, and the dimension of ox, everywhere you look at ox, 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 that means the living creature, creature is with you. You know, I explained it earlier telling you that sometimes as the son, you know, you might want to speak to the father and he tells you, go and speak. I've sent you an angel. Go and speak to him. You might want to speak to Jesus whom you've become. And he says, an angel is with you. Go and speak to him. You might want to speak to Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, I'm here. Let's have a conversation. And he tells you, no, 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 no. An angel is with you <laughs> because I brought him to you. Holy Ghost brought them to you. So you can see so your answer is not with God, it's not with Jesus, it's not with the Holy Ghost, it's with the angel. <laughs> That's why if you read the book of Revelation, it tells us in the book of Revelation chapter 10, go to the angel by the river. <laughs> he could have received it from God. He could have received it from Jesus who had been opening the scrolls. He could have received it from Holy Ghost, but he was directed to the angel. So when the living creature is with you and you begin to see ox everywhere, it is not the face of God. It is the face of the angel. Can you see that? And he's saying that for what you need to do in this hour, strength through him will be manifested. Strength comes in different dimensions. Although it, it, everything is in Christ because he is the way, the truth, and the life. But then angels. So Jesus can say, hey, I know you need strength. The angel will come. He touches you. You're strengthened again. Can you see that? <laughs> You're strengthened again. So when you see the wild ox, the living creature is with you to manifest strength through you. Because he brought them out of Egypt with Moses in the strength, like the strength of a wild ox. So you can see that dimension in itself. So in another scripture, let's go to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, verse 9. I know that, um, you know, I, I trust that a lot of us are learning from this because we need to, we need to basically uh, stop calling that in itself the four faces of God because that is not what it is. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 9, the Bible says, Do I say these things from verse 8 as a mere man? Or does not the law say the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, You shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. Is it oxen God is concerned about? Or does he say it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written that he who plows should plow in hope and he who treasures in hope should be partaker of this hope. Can you see that dimension? That means, can you, you, you do you have to muzzle an ox? If you're walking in the dimension of an ox, you can't be quiet. No, the enemy will try to silence you, but you cannot be silent because you have to keep going. You have to keep speaking what the Lord is calling you to speak. Because why? You're... <laughs> you're treading out the grain so you're giving out the word you're basically encouraging people you're praying for them can you see that so you, that's why he says that he who plows should plow in hope continue to give out the word in hope continue to pray for the people in hope continue to release hope to the people that they might be encouraged so you can't muzzle an ox you can't silence when the ox is active because you're going in the strength of the ox the angel, the living creature. <laughs> you see that dimension? So it is not, like I keep saying, the face of God. We keep going. So in Psalm 114, let's go to uh, 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 
Let's go to our Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 4. And this is a dimension of increase in itself. When the Father basically wants to give you increase, you know, wisdom, we thank God for wisdom. This is what the Bible says. It says, where no oxen are, yes, the trial is clean, but much increase comes by the strength of an ox. So you can see there is a dimension the Lord wants to walk you in increase. The living creature is with you, strengthening you, and increase comes to you through the strength that the living creature is releasing to you. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? Can you see what the ox through the living creature, the manifestation of it, is manifesting? To God be the glory. So this is where you begin to understand, you know, that's, that's the dimension of the Father. That's why it continues to say, don't muscle an ox. Don't silence. So the angel is with you. Why do you want to silence him? He's there, you know, to speak his word to you. Because majority of the people, you know, when the angel is trying to speak to them, they can basically, uh, this is the devil. <laughs> do you know that dimension of religion? This is the devil. No, 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 no. I've never seen something like this before. This, must, this is not of God. This must be the devil. But actually, it's the angel of the Lord. So if you read 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 18, it says that what? For the scripture says, do not muzzle an ox while he treads out the grain. The laborer is worthy of his wages. So the laborer has been working. And now, <laughs> maybe you don't want to pay that person. You are trying to silence him. You know, because you don't want to pay him, you're trying to silence him. Because you don't want to help that person, you're trying to silence them. Because you don't want to do what they're telling you to do, you're not trying to silence them. Don't muzzle the ox. Don't muzzle the dimension of what the angel is speaking because he's speaking it through you. Amen? <laughs> to God be the glory. So that's the dimension of the face of the ox. Now let's look at what? So now I want us to look at another chapter, Psalm 114. Uh, you know, I was going to I was gonna move away from that, but <laughs> the, Lord is, the Lord is intentional. So Psalm 114 and Psalm 144 verse 14. And this is what it says. It says that our oxen may be well laden, that there'll be no more breaking in or out. There'll be no outcry in our streets. Happy are those who are in such a state. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. What does this mean? That means through the strength of an ox, the hedge that is around you, there is no breaking in or breaking out. So it's a place where, you know, the Lord can tell you, this person, you know, somebody is trying to come against you. You rise up in prayer in the strength of an ox so that nobody is able to break in into your very dimension that you are. Because, you know, that's the strength it gives you, whether through worship, whether through praise, whether through prayer, it's all in the strength of what? Of an ox. Which is what? One of the face of the living creature. Amen? <laughs> to God be the glory. Now, let's look at the dimension of the lion. We can see the father in, the, in different dimensions. You know, my, you know the, he basically, he's being spoken, you know, in the dimension of a lion. That's why I said the bush was on fire, but it was not burned and God spoke through it. So we can see lions in different dimensions, you know, in, in, in the Bible. But in Revelation chapter 5, it says that what? In verse 5. The one, then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Why? Because he was trying to open the scroll and there was no one to open it. And he said, do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. So why is he describing the dimension of that angel as what? A lion. Describing Jesus as the what? As the what? As the root of David, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Why is that? That is because the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, chapter 28 and verse 1, it says the righteous are what? Are as bold as what? As the lion. <laughs> so it talks about boldness, right? Yes, it talks about boldness. So I want to read that in, in full context so that we can better understand it. It says the wicked flee when no one is pursuing them, but the righteous, they are as bold as a lion. So you can see that when before Jesus came onto the scene, you know, on the Mount of Transfiguration, there is, he was already on the scene, pardon me, he was already on the scene, but he was being transfigured. Who came to speak to him concerning his ministry? Elijah and who? And Moses. So Elijah 
went in the power. <laughs> That's why they said, you know, Elijah has come. Because why? You know, the people did not receive him, which was talking about John the Baptist. Because Elijah was bold. He faced, you know, the whole prophet of Baal and dealt with them completely. That was boldness. He stepped up to it. <laughs> you know, it's like the anointing was strong. He killed all of them. Then Jezebel spoke. He ran away. <laughs> so you can see. But now we see him again in Matthew 17. And there he is. Because everything Jesus did, Jesus walked in boldness. He spoke to Herod. He spoke to the Pharisees. He confronted the Sadducees. You know, he spoke those seven woes unto them. And those who were not willing to receive them, he spoke to them too. When people were, when he was talking about the, the bread in John chapter 6, in John chapter the six, he said to them, hey, you know, are you willing to walk away too? Well, you can go too if you want to, you know, because he knew who he was in the Father. That's how bold Jesus was. And he still is through you because you're him. So you can see that dimension. That is why he's always encouraging you. Be bold. Be bold because I'm with you. You can see that in itself. That is why they come to encourage you. Walking in the realm of what? Of the dimension of the lion of the tribe of Judah. To walk in boldness. So is it your ministry? Walk in boldness. You know, is it your, your, your business? Walk in boldness. To speak to those people? Walk in boldness. Look at what Proverbs chapter 30. Look at what Proverbs 30 and verse 30. Look at what it says. Shall we go there for a minute? It says that what? There are three things that are stately in their stride. Four that move with stately bearing. A lion, mighty among beasts, who retreats before nothing. And that is why the Lord continues to tell you that I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Can you see that? That whatever I am giving you to do, approach it with boldness. Do it in humility and with absolute love because I am with you. So when you begin to understand that, that is sometimes perhaps the angel with you encouraging you and saying to you, I am with you for what you're doing because you are in the dimension of the face of the lion, boldness. So you can see that sometimes, you know, have you been in that dimension before? Because I have. You know, sometimes I would just come on and I'll just declare a word. Boom. You know, and that would be it. And I'll come off it. And when I finish declaring the word and I start to think about it, I'm like, Lord, <laughs> the way I spoke that, that seemed too harsh. That seemed too, you know, Lord. And he said, that's what I asked you to speak because you spoke as me. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? Because he was with you. The lion of the tribe of Judah. He was with you when you were speaking and the angel was present to help you. The bush was on fire, but it was not burning and God spoke. Your spirit is one with the Father. That's why I said, you are not, the four faces is not the face of God. God is unlimited. We cannot limit God to four faces. Look at how many billions of people are on earth. <laughs> Look at the billions of people. And I want you to think about it. If they are all in Christ Jesus, that is the different dimensions of the Father in the people. That is why it says, in my Father's house, there are many. So if there are many, I'm looking at you, you're Christ. You're looking at me, I'm Christ. I'm looking at the pastor, the apostle, the evangelist, they are Christ. Those are the dimensions of the face of the Father. So what am I going to limit that to just four? <laughs> amen and amen so this is where you begin to understand you know that's the beauty of the father that's the love of the father because religion has said this again and again they call it the throne of god is not the throne they call it the faces of god it is not no not at all <laughs> it's the face of the living creature so you look at a lizard you can see a lizard moving around and you call it the face of god <laughs> no no <laughs> or the donkey that spoke in the days of balaam is that the face of god no not at all it's a dimension in the father come up here yes because there is a door open and i want to show you so however way he's going to show you that's between you and the father Glory to God 
Amen? <laughs> and amen. So that is talking about what? That is talking about the face of a lion. Let's go to another dimension, which I was talking about in Hosea chapter 5. Because in the book of Hosea, it tells us, you know, like I said, the dimension of the lion, when God moves in that aspect, and he basically, you know, he explains it in the realm of a lion, he tells you it's either for judgment or it's either for rescue. One or the two. Yeah. One or the two. That's the dimension of it. Let's look at it from verse 13. It says, when Ephraim saw his sickness, because this was the very, uh, uh, you know, this is a, a chapter where Israel were just, they were just, they, they, you know, they were just rebelling against God. And the judgment came against Israel. And this is what the Lord was saying. It says, when Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah his sores, then Ephraim turned to Assyria and sent to the great king for help. But he's not able to cure you, not able to heal your sores. For I will be like a lion to Ephraim, like a great lion to Judah. I will tear them to pieces and go away. I will carry them off with no one to rescue them. Then I will return to my lair until they have borne their guilt and seek my face in their mystery, in their misery, they will earnestly seek me. Can you see that dimension? So this is how the Lord was saying. This is how majority of them are going to go away in captivity. But when they seek me, I will return to them. <laughs> Can you see that dimension? So when you look at the father in that in itself, he's explaining on the basis of the lion that, hey, this is what the lion does. I'm able to do that too, even much worse. <laughs> Can you see that? And when you're declaring, so you as the son of God, you as Christ, when the Lord tells you, I need you to speak against this. I need you to speak for this. I need you to speak this. And you are in the realm of what? The living creature, the face of the lion. That means the living creature is with you to help you to walk in boldness for what God has called you to do. They are ministers, heirs of salvation. They are here to minister to you. Amen and amen. So let's look at in this, you know, so the dimension of the father like a lion, like I said, is to bring judgment or to rescue. So let's move over to the eagles. <laughs> I love this part. I love I love eagles. They are, they, you know, especially the bald eagle. They are amazing. They're so beautiful. I love them. The bald eagles. <laughs> I was learning about them at some point, and I'm like, wow, Father, they are just such beautiful and amazing creatures. They are very beautiful. You know, one of the things, all create all creatures are beautiful. You know, I, I love all creatures. They are amazing, you know. And so some of you that, you know, you like to kill spiders and hurt flies and things like that. Ah, please, I just speak the mercy of God over you. Because those creatures, God said they are beautiful and they are good and you're killing what's good. <laughs> Lord, have mercy on you, hey? <laughs> Amen. So this is where you begin to understand it. It says, you know, in the dimension of the egos, let me explain it from the realm of Jesus. Remember when Jesus was crossing over to the other side and there was a storm? What was he doing? He was sleeping, right? Yeah, our Lord and our Savior was basically, you know, he was resting away. And while the disciples, they were there panicking. Hey, do you care that we perish? And Jesus said, you, you, what's, what's wrong with you all? You know, why, why don't you have faith? <laughs> do you see how Jesus, Jesus dealt with the storm and then spoke to them right after that? Because he spoke to the storm, peace be still. And this is the dimension of what? The living creature with the face of an eagle in flight. So it's not just about accuracy because when people explain about eagles, they talk about vision. You know, your vision is way much more accurate <laughs> than that of an eagle. You know, I, I was reading something and it was explaining about eagles. Basically, they can fly as high as 10,000 feet. I'm sure they can do higher than that, you know. <laughs> but that is where, that's how people have basically said that that's how they fly. That's how high they fly. But I believe they fly higher than that. But you can see that in the dimension of an eagle, they are always looking for storms. Eagles, they are always looking for storms because it is in the dimension of storms that they rest. Eagles, they rest in storms. So that's why I explained the dimension of Jesus who was resting in the midst of the storm. You can see that in itself because he said, look at this storm that is coming against you. You can speak to it and it will calm down. And that's what Jesus did and it manifested. So majority of it, 
when the storm is coming majority of us you know in times past will probably run away because of the storm because of the situation we can't handle it you know when we begin to confess those things i can't handle it i can't do it and the lord is saying you can and the reason why he's saying you can is because a living creature is with you to help you to navigate through it so you can see that in itself i remember i was watching you know the lord brought this video of this amazing bald eagle and I was watching this ego and it was so beautiful because the Lord was helping me to understand accuracy in what? In vision. So it was a place I was just watching it and they put a camera on the back of an ego. And I think it was somewhere in, 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 you know, in one of the Arabian countries in the Middle East. And they took this ego to the top of a tower. I mean, this tower, you know, it was basically in the midst of clouds. <laughs> That's how high this tower was. So they climbed all the way up with a camera strapped to the back of an eagle. And then, you know, the owner of the eagle was all the way on the ground. And when they released the eagle, you can see the eagle. He was trying to look. He was looking. He was looking. He was looking for its owner right there as high as 10,000 or way above that. And he was looking around, you know, it was first circling around, circling around that high. It was circling around, just wings out. And there was no flapping. He just was sorry. And what happened? Less than two minutes, he found its owner and he just went, came all the, it, the rate at which it came down was so beautiful. It came all the way down right to where the owner was and everybody was clapping. What a vision. It was so accurate, so beautiful. I'm like, how will this, how is it going to be able to find its owner in the midst of all of that? Because seeing from there, there were so many houses, so many towns, you know, you can see bridges, you can see all of these things. It was just so much there. But yet, in the midst of all of that, it found its owner and came swooping all the way down to rest in him. This is what Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31 helps us to understand. Can you see? The dimension of the face of the living creature. <laughs> That's why the Lord is helping you to understand that I am with you more than you know. I am with you more than you know. So here it says, it says he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It says they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall what? Mount up with wings like eagles. Because when you look at it, it was talking about, you know, when I was studying about the bald eagle, it's just absolutely beautiful because there come a time, you know, when the wings are, when the wings are probably tired and weary, they basically find a place. And in, the, in this place that they, they, you know, they find a secure place and then they begin to pluck out their wings. You know, they, 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 the wings, they, they pluck it all out, the hair on it, the feathers, basically, they pluck it out. And then they wait. There is a waiting period. They wait for that feather to grow back. Can you see? And when they grow back, it is refreshed because the, the feathers on there before, they're probably worn out. <laughs> they can't use that anymore. So they go to that, they refresh for however long they have to wait. Then they come back out again and it's all like new again and they're able to fly. So you can begin to see, I believe that was that was what I was seeing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm not at the accuracy of that to God be the glory. Lord help us have mercy, right? <laughs> so that's what it means that they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings. They shall run and not be weary. They shall work and not faint. So that's why sometimes when you're doing things, the Lord calls you back into a place of rest so that you can be refreshed like that in itself, be restored and then go back out again and be able to do things in perfection. So you can see what this is helping majority of us to understand because this is what the Lord Remember, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 14, after the woman had given birth to what she was carrying, what was given to her? Two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is, oh, thank you, Jesus. He said, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. What did I just say about eagles? That they basically retreat, the feathers fall off, so that new ones grow, 
that they can go back out and then fly much greater than they did before. And to the woman, Revelation 12, 14, were given two wings of an eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is what? Nourished for a time. So while the eagle is there, it is being nourished. Can you see that? That's why God, so if you look at what God now said about himself concerning an eagle in Jeremiah 48, 14, he says, for thus said the Lord, behold, he shall fly as an eagle and shall spread his wings over Moab. So you can see how God is using an eagle to describe a dimension of himself, not who God is. God is greater than an eagle. We can't limit God to an eagle. He's using, that is why I said sometimes God uses creation to express himself. When, uh, when, uh, what's her name? Uh, Aaron and, uh, 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 Aaron and, and, and the sister, you know, uh, uh, uh when they were basically, and uh, Miriam, well, thank you, Holy Ghost, when they were basically rebelling, when, you know, they were speaking against Moses, God came down in a cloud. Is God the cloud? <laughs> No, it's not. He came down in a cloud. So you can see he uses creation sometimes to express himself. Can you see that? Now look at the encouragement he was even given to the Israelites. In Exodus chapter 19 verse 4, he said, You see what I did unto the Egyptians, how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Why is it always about the wings of an eagle? Because when it's in a storm, hmm, it's at rest. So that's why when the, when the storm is trying to rage against you, the Lord is helping you to understand, I am with you. Just rest on this eagle's wings <laughs> and just fly. Can you see that dimension? Just rest on it because the eagle's wings will carry you. Because it's what? It is rest. You're going to get there. Majority of you. That is what the Lord is speaking to you. Just rest in me because you don't need to toil. You don't need to, la you don't need to labor in vain and all your toilings and stridings and strugglings. Just rest in me and I will get you to where you need to be with ease. <laughs> Do you see that in itself? We give God the glory because that is the dimension of the ego. Now, to the face of man. Ah. Now, the dimension of the face of man on the living creatures is not most of the time a pleasant place. <laughs> Remember, the Bible tells us, you know, if you read Matthew 20, 28, shall we read that together? Let's read Matthew 20, 28. Jesus, most of the time, he basically referred to himself as what? As the son of man. So you can see the face of man. So he will always refer to himself as the son of man. Let's read it together. Matthew 20, 28. And this is what it says. It says, whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So you can see the dimension of this scripture. It was a, a verse where Jesus gave all. It was a dimension where Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. Though he's God, he humbled himself. Can you see that? He humbled himself. He could have come and say, I am God. All of you begin to serve me. Begin to do this for me. I am God. I can do this to you. But he did that. He humbled himself. He said, just as the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a rap. Look at the price that he paid for you and I to be set free, to walk in freedom. That is where you see that dimension on the cross. Can you see? The face of man. He was on the cross. And when the face of man, when that dimension is with you, this is where you begin to understand that it is all God, not you. <laughs> it is all God. It is all God. That is when that scripture begins to manifest. Trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. <laughs> Can you see that? In all your ways, acknowledge it. Trust in the Lord and lean. So when he says trust in the Lord and lean, that is helping you to understand. This is a dimension where you're going to trust God with everything. Because before, you were doing things in strength with, your, with, with the strength he has given you. You were doing it in the rest, isn't it? You were doing it, yes, in boldness. <laughs> but now, you will have to trust God completely. I don't understand it. I don't know what's going on. This was what happened with Jesus on the cross. He said, Father, not my will, but yours be done. And when he was heading to the cross, what happened? He said, Father, 
Why had that forsaken me? So that means in the face, in the dimension of the face of man, there comes a point. It feels like God has left your presence, but actually he's more with you than you know. Because the dimension of the face of man, that means the angel is actually with you. So sometimes it could be a place of test. <laughs> Let me speak it in this dimension unto each and every one of us, right? You have been in a school for a whole year. You have studied under that lecturer, under that teacher, professor, whoever it is, for a whole year. Now comes the exam period. In the times of exam, there is no textbooks. It's just you and the questions. So you have to trust what you read before you came into that exam. And you're going to have to bear it all on that piece of paper, the answers. That is exactly what happened with the Lord Jesus Christ. He had to what? He knew, you know, he had already gone through all the process. He had sown the seed, blessed the people, miracles, raised the dead. He had done everything. But now it was the time for his glory. Can you see that? <laughs> Father, glorify thyself. I will glorify it again. He said, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. So now you can see when he said that in John chapter 17, two chapters later, he was before Herod. <laughs> and in that moment, it felt like the God was not there. In that moment, it seemed like, you know, God, where are you? That Jesus had to cry out, Father. Father, why have thou forsaken me? Are you at a place where it feels like God is not there? You're doing the work. You've been calling out to him. It's all silent. You've been praying for people. But for yourself, nothing seems to be happening. They keep coming, sharing testimonies with you. And you're asking God, where are you? You're being persecuted at your church. Your place of sanctuary, your sanctuary, yeah, at your place of work, your business, all around, you're being persecuted. God, I've been crying out to you, where are thou? Silence. Are you in that dimension? Understand that you're going through a test. <laughs> Do you see that in itself? Because I've been there too. Because, so you know, it's amazing because it's a place where, you know, after after 40 days, the Lord said, you have to bring out, you have to keep recording. You have to keep recording. You have to keep recording. At some point, I was like, Lord, I am so, I am so tired, Lord. I am so, and immediately, you know, I, you know, not like I'm tired, you know, the Bible says we can do all things, but I'm confessing that to him to help to understand, you know, so I just bless, <laughs> I bless with strength, you know, and, and I take authority over tiredness. So it's a place like I'm, I'm asking the Lord, I'm just weary. I just I just, I just want to rest for a bit, you know, and immediately I begin to cry out to the Lord. He will give me a scripture. Now go and read this. Well, he says, you have to keep going. Lord, really? But I just thought, I just want to relax. You have to keep going. So again and again and again. Why? Because he said you are in the realm of what? Of Many waters. Many waters, that means he's continuously speaking. So you have to keep going. You have to keep going. You have to keep going. So in that moment, you take up the opportunity. Why? Because you are in the place of the face of man. When you're not relying on yourself, but relying completely on God. Which means when you don't even understand it. Remember the new wine. When they were pouring water, they are asking for wine. You're pouring water. What is the difference between, you know, what, 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 what how can we relate this to? But they kept doing it anyway and eventually it turned into wine eventually on the third day jesus got up and it was what raised again eventually answer came into your life eventually what you have been believing for manifested eventually that in which you have waited for now manifested in your presence this is the face of man can i read a scripture to you Let's go to the book of Philippians and chapter 2. <laughs> because you might wonder, you know, let's go to Philippians and chapter 2 so that we can see it. This is what was explained about Jesus. The Bible says he was obedient. Can we read it together? Yes, from verse 2. From verse 4, not look into our own interest, not look into your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God. Can you see that? In the what? In the very nature of God, in the very nature of God, who being in very nature 
God did not consider equality with God something to be used in his own advantage. Yes, he's sitting as God, but he did not use that to his own advantage. Verse 7, rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in what? In the likeness of man. Can you see that in itself? He made himself in the likeness of man. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. That means I might be going through that situation. It's not comfortable, but I have to keep going. You know, that situation might seem like it's, Lord, am I going to make it out? <laughs> you know, I remember in 2000, in 2019, I think they're about. I was going through, there was a, there were, I was going through so much, you know, warfare, you know, witchcraft, all of those things appearing to the point that I just came into where I used to pray and I laid on the ground and I said, Lord, <laughs> am I going to make it? Are, are you sure I'm going to be alive when all of this, is, you know, because I began to question it. Lord, am I going to be alive? Am I going to be alive after this is said and done so that I can know how to prepare myself? <laughs> I was asking the Lord that question. I said, Lord, am I am I going to go? You know, help me to understand it because this is too much. Help me. You know, this was exactly the scripture. And, you know, it felt like God was not there. Everything was silent. It, was, it felt like nothing was happening. But yet, understanding it now, when he showed it to me, he said, my angels were with you. The living creatures were with you. <laughs> so when he said i'm being found in an appearance as a man he humbled himself so everything i was doing i was like lord am i sure is this the right way is this the right thing am i doing what is right help me to understand it so this has been the journey for majority of you and it's helping to understand that's why that scripture keeps coming there are more with you than those against you there are more with you than those against you so don't focus on what is happening all around you let your focus be on me because i am with you even when it feels like i am not there because when you believe that is not there that is when it's actually there the most <laughs> <laughs> do you see because with jesus on the cross the veil torn you know when jesus said why have thou forsaken me did the veil not tear from top to bottom it did did the earthquake not happen yes it did did the earth not grow dark yes it did look at the manifestations of the father even when jesus said why had thou forsaken me <laughs> so you can see god was with him all the way through so that's the cry where majority of us are at because it might feel like God is not there, but he's actually there, more than you know. So this is where I want to conclude this in itself, just to help you to understand that the yod hey vav hey is not the four faces of God. We now see it from the Bible because in the beginning was the word. They are angels, <laughs> living creatures. And what they do, whenever you see them, is they are there to help you to do what God has called you to do. And it's always in the dimension of worship. So anytime you're basically worshiping and you don't know why you're worshiping, the four living creatures are with you. The living creatures, they are with you. Maybe one, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four. They are there with you and they are always singing holy because you have come before the throne. Can you see that? So every time you begin to, you're worshipping and you're doing, yeah, Lord, I'm just worshipping. You are already in the throne. Immediately I was in the spirit, a throne set in heaven. You are before it. You are inside of it. That is the reason because you've come in oneness with the Father. So when you see it, so when the living creatures are there worshiping, so that's why sometimes you can wake up in the middle of the night and there's a worship song in your spirit. That's because you have been there with them. You're worshiping the Father. So when you wake up, that worship that you've been hearing, put it on. Then you come into very agreement of how they have been worshiping. Because they are with you. The 24 elders are with you. Everybody together, they are worshiping the Father. 
the dimension of the living creatures. And most of the time when you need to do what needs to be done, Ezekiel chapter 1, they help you to accurately go where you need to go, the dimension of the eagle in flight. So if the Lord says, hey, you know, I need you to go down where in this place, that place, this place, that place, that place, and you know, you know, Father, I can get confused. You know what is happening here? They come and you realize they begin to move you. You just walk there, you walk there, you walk there, you walk there, you walk there, and you walk back exactly what needs to be done that is what you do because the bible says that beside them is the wheels and their spirit is in the wheels so by very much revelation you sit in the wheels <laughs> and when you sit in the wheels they take you everywhere you need to go and then you come back and you don't miss a thing they make sure you get it done <laughs> do you see that dimension it's such a beautiful dimension so the four faces are not of god they are of the living creature. Do you see that? So we just renounce that teaching. Every teaching that we've been taught, that is the four faces of God. We renounce it and we repent of it. And I bless you with mercy. And those who have been teaching this, we pray for this revelation to come before them. It's not the four faces of God. The four fa the faces of God is unlimited. Behold, you know, when you behold him who is sitting upon the throne, he says, the one sat on the throne and it says, he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne. Look at how basically Apostle John described it. He said it was like a jasper. He was describing because God, to describe God is unlimited. God, you know, describing the Father. <laughs> we can be here. We will be here eternally until eternity, you know, describing the Father. Because why? The dimension of him is just way unlimited. So why would we put four faces to the unlimited God <laughs> who dwells far above the heavens and sits in heaven? That the robe of his is what? That his robe fills the temple. And we're basically limiting him to four faces? No. yod hey vav -Hey is the song of the living creatures. When you begin to hear it, they are in your presence so that you can come in alignment with them to do whatever dimension of their face they are revealing to you for you to do what they've called you to do. Amen? <laughs> and amen. I bless each and every one of you. To God be the glory. So have a wonderful and a glorious and an amazing time in the presence of God. I love you all. Stay blessed in the presence that you are. God bless you. Amen.